Hello everyone and welcome back. Finally, I'm again starting a new video in English. This time we are playing Orzo to Fury Existence with Basilisk Gate. Uh, I've already played a league with on Twitch uh, with this deck, but I made some changes from the previous deck list. Uh, mainly I changed the white part of the sideboard, but also after getting some a new point of view from the Tortured Existence Discord, I decided to cut the other way to add my Rasp. The result is pretty simple. My Rasp is better, can kill both Kurska Fisher and Festival Crusher, which are two important cards of this the core of metagame. Then I talked about uh, adding more removal spells on the deck. First I talked about Fume Speecher, which is great I think with Tortured Existence, especially against uh, Furious, but Furious aside, in my opinion, Fume Speecher doesn't really do much. For that reason, I thought about adding one extra copy of our Romancer uh, in form of Monk Idolist. Science Film Speaker just gives a minus one, minus one counter, and most creatures right now are two, two or more. So basically, I thought about uh, Monorail Blitz creatures but also creatures from decks like Arachnus Burn and even also Furious itself. Science, Niche of Thieves Power and Delver of them have two on toughness. For that reason I think that my Rasp and more cards being able to return my Rasp could be a slightly better addition for the from speaker at the last the current meta game. Also another part that uh, I think that could be more important uh, that could be really relevant uh, regarding tour to existence is uh, the ability to play a traditional style midrange deck uh, a traditional style game plan even without tour to existence. So having normal spells and cards that replace themselves uh, with uh, a fair bit down plan with Gerdon's Guild Pact and Basilisk Gate, of course. Uh, even when you don't have Tortured Existence, I think uh, that's so important that uh, uh, that is the reason why I prefer to not play the current color and and why I prefer to have more cards like Night Whisper and Cast Down. So I'm not relying entirely on Turtle Existence and I prefer to play a deck less focused on Turtle Existence because I don't want to play a deck that is forced to mulligan too hard trying to find Turtle Existence or uh, or whatever, a deck that doesn't do anything relevant without the Tortured Existence. And I found the game plan of this Tortured Existence version good enough to be played on uh, in a competitive metagame. Uh, of course, uh, this deck is too much fair compared to the broken ones in the current metagame, but from is still fun enough and still competitive enough to be played. So I already recorded the uh, the lead that uh, you are going to watch in this video, and I can also say that we can still make some improvements. So those for impro those improvements is, are just uh, adding. Uh, the fourth copy of Basilisk Gate and eventually also the fourth copy of Ors of Basilica. Uh, we can just uh, cut the Ashbarans. Uh, I am a big fan of Ashbarans in this kind of midrange deck because you can uh, uh, take a mulligan, put on the bottom some cards, 
uh, having the uh, singleton copies and then just uh, cycle Ash Barons to be able then later in the game to draw again the cards that you put uh, on the bottom of your deck. Uh, but Basilisk Gate was so good as a win condition that probably want to play more than three copies because often being able to find the second copy of Basilisk Gate means that you are 100% able to win the game. Uh, of course, uh, you are also much faster and you are already running three copies of Garden of the Kill Pact, but Garden of the Kill Pact you can uh, draw it uh, from your even from your grave if you dredge it with the Gold Grave Brown Scale, but there's no recursion to Basilisk Gate, so the only way to draw it is by drawing it from your top deck. And uh, the fourth copy of Ors Basilica, I even mean, doubt you we are already playing them tap line is just because uh, uh, any non blue mid range deck uh, truly needs to not miss uh, the first four or five land drops and uh, Orzo Basilica is just the best land when it comes to not miss any land drop. So talking about the deck Generally speaking, uh, I think that it's important to note that uh, the white compared to the green at at least two things. The first one is a romancer or custody square, and a romancer in is kind of important to bring back to the deck system from the graveyard. Which means that if you are playing against a counter spell deck and they counter it. Uh, uh, you can bring it back with a romancer. If you are playing against a deck that have uh, our enchantment state, you can bring it from your graveyard, and also you can bring back from your graveyard cards like Mar uh, Grasp or Deadweight. Another part, and basically the reason why I'm playing Basilisk Gate, is Garden of the Guild Pact. Um, I took the idea of playing Orzo to the existence from isn't the one, since is already tried a Turtle Existence deck playing white instead of green. And in his version, uh, it was important to note that he was playing both Night Whisper and the Guard of the Kill Pact, but he was also playing Pestilence. Well, I don't like Pestilence in a deck with Turtle Existence for the simple reason that he think that Kripras is better. And another cool part about Basilisk Gate is that you can uh, pump your creep rats, then and then activate it. If you do that, you are then able to let your creep rats survive, which means that you are able to deal damage with creep rats each turn, and maybe it will be important against uh, decks like uh, Boros Bully, Boros Metacraft, Stompy, Bar Elves, etc. So this kind of uh, uh, is very similar to the old combo uh, Undying Evil on Kerprats. So you uh, was something like a played or something like played uh, five or six years ago in Pauper in uh, some version of Demir Control. You uh, that was also running cards like Rima Harvest and Mold Drifter. So basically, you activate your creep rats before, uh, he, uh, before it dies, you target it with an evil, then creep rats return as a 2 2, and then you can uh, activate creep rats every turn to, get, to deal 1 damage, kill all the opponent creators, and also deal extra damage. Another important part for this deck, besides Catra's Commando, which is just a different version of the green caterpillar that uh, does the same thing, so destroying artifacts and enchantments, is the presence of Inspiring Overseer and Refines Info Mark. Inspiring Overseer, I tried it over other uh, cantripping creatures, German Inspector, and uh, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one, uh, enchantment dog, because it has Plank. Since it has playing is better with Basilisk Gate, and also it can block uh, in a better way, but uh, creature with two on darkness, I think about 
each of the towers, for example. And then it can also block other inspiring overseer, Lintook, and of course, Fairy Seer and Stutter Sprite. The enchantment dog creature could be eventually uh, better compared to Inspiring Overseer, so it, so it replaces itself with only 2 mana instead of 1, and also because we run our monster, and we can uh, of course return uh, an enchantment creature with our monster. Rafine's Informant then is the card that I think is most uh, important in white uh, beside Garden of the Gilpot, and the reason is pretty simple. I found Cornelius on Rafine's Informant really great for two reasons at least. The first one is that you can put with it a creature on the graveyard, and that's really important with Torture and Existence, and the second uh, way to get advantage from Rafine's from Rafine's Informant is Grave Scrabbler. So it's you can just cast it from Madness, it plays in a similar way to, or in exact, in exact same ways as Tortured Existence. So basically, we are running 8 cards that can discard Herb Scrabbler and activate its Madness cost. Anyway, most times I play Rafine's Informat, I discard the Golgari Brown Scale because uh, Golgari Brown Scale in this deck doesn't do anything besides being discarded to either to Red Existence or Rafine's Informat. And you can also eventually cast Golgari Brown Scale if you name Green with uh, Citadel Gate or Black Dragon Gate. And that's the reason why I'm playing uh, uh, the Baldur's Gate Gates instead of the Ravnica Gates because you can sometimes name green just to be able to cast Golgari Brown Skill. Yeah, it costs double green, so you require a lot of gates, but having the change to playing Golgari Brown Skill, uh, I think. Uh, uh, is enough to play the Baldur's Gate gates over the older ones. And another card that I play in Singleton Copy is Flashback Marauder, which uh, probably is better to play at least in two copies uh, because uh, uh, it's an overcosted creature, but it's still a, a removal spell on a creature deck and a creature card. So, for that reason, uh, I think is a must in a, in at least one copy. Kerberos is another important card, maybe the most important creature beside Grave Scrabbler, and the reason is pretty simple. Uh, if we don't run so too many too many removal spells, Kerberos just does the uh, just does the thing. I mean, uh, swarm stacks usually are bad matchups for decks that doesn't really have a lot of uh, removal spells since we only have 8 removal spells and I think that having 4 copies of creep rods, 2 main deck and 2 on cyber is important when Bruce Bully and Mono Blue Furies are a relevant part of the metagame. Well, we should talk about the cyber after all. Carrying out the false oop is uh, Really bad creature, <laughs> but uh, we can bring it. Uh, we can bring the Kami against uh, decks uh, like Stompy or Buggles just to have a uh, fog lock along inside the uh, example of Good Guy Brown Skill and Two Deck Assistance. So each turn you dredge your Good Guy Brown Skill and then. Uh, Replace the, uh, the Bronx scale with the Kami and play the Kami and fog your opponent during their turn. And not uh, so many decks in the Pauper format, in the, uh, in the current Pauper metagame, uh, play a straightforward uh, aggro beatdown uh, game plan without having at least get shot as a sideboard. Uh, Rumble spell, but against certain decks uh, it may be helpful. 
Mm, I'm not really sure about playing Kami of the False Hope, uh, especially since I haven't found yet any decks besides Bolos, uh, which uh, which against could be helpful. I just put the Kami in my side percent. It can be a sort of uh, out win against uh, certain decks. Mm, well. Maybe later I'll cut it to add more, uh, more eight, uh, trying to uh, to beat some specific decks that are more present in the meta game. But till now, I st I'll still go with two copies of Kami of the Pulse. Oop. We of course have to order two copies of Creepers and another copy of Cutter Commander since we need them. A way to interact with cards like Nihil's Bible, Relic of Progenitus, Makeshift Munitions, or Pestilence. We have three copies of Jordan Turnover since we don't really have a lot of Remo spells, and I think that for this deck it's important to have uh, something like 12 Ramos against uh, Mono Red Blades uh, and other turn for uh, Agro Kill, uh, kill decks. We have three copies of Fairy Macabre just because uh, we do really need some uh, graveyard date against uh, Ephemerate decks. And when you play Fairy Macabre, you should play at least three copies. Uh, because you need to find first a copy of Fairy Macabre, and then you need to find also True to the Existence to just try to get some advantage from it. Uh, anyway, probably Ephemerate decks are too much. Bad as for us a matchup that probably gate Basilisk Gate plus Guard of the Killpot are the most solid win con alongside Kerberos. So I'm not sure about Fear Macabre, but it's probably still necessary. And finally, Duras, because I really don't know which uh, discard effect could be the best for this deck, and I just put the best answer to counter spell. And Duras, from my point of view, seems the best way to let one copy of Dirt to existence to resolve. So, a sort of uh, I cast first Duras, uh, remove their counter spell from their hand, and then resolve Dirt to existence, hoping they don't draw any enchantment dates. Okay, so the deck basically seems uh, to me something really cool to play, not really well positioned in the metagame. Uh, but seems still playable and really, really a fun deck to play. So I hope you will enjoy uh, my gameplay and let's start. Let's start. All right, I found the first match we are against Patrol. Patrol, Patrol. The opponent uh, is starting first, and we are uh, we have a really really bad starting end. So we are taking a again. Eh, gross. All right, I don't really want to go down to five, so I'm keeping this one lander just because I have money to whisper. Not sure how, but. I went out I have 21 lands, I often have only one land in my starting end. Or at least, that seems to be just a thing that happens in the last few weeks, the last few days. Oh, we're against Mono Black Devotion. Uh, the, we've got lucky enough to draw one land, so next turn you can play reference format if you don't found land. I try to find uh okay. There's Citrine Rats and we reference in format. Discarding the lizard. And we haven't found a land, of course. Opponent uh, will probably have uh, a raw spell or Something even worse, in example, Crown of Black Rose. Nope. Deadweight. So they play both Deadweight and the Fire, probably. Yeah, we found a land. 
By the way, I still think that probably we should run for instinct for one trying to find another land so we can wipe their board with the creep rots or just cause them to use their mana trying to kill my stuff. Mars Grasp. Hmm. I think that there's no way I will be able to destroy their creature with creep rots, so I'm just playing Citadel Gate. Naming black and pass. I need at least another land so I can double raw spells their creatures. Or if I don't draw a land, I at least I'll play any spirit course here trying to find a land. Maybe a bounce land. Mm -hmm. The matchup seems playable. They don't really have a lot of character damage besides Senior Blood. Their discard effect is just Sisering Rot. Okay, there's a Timber Aqueduct. They are probably attacking all the way to Sisering Rot. Nope. Okay, so they probably have a. Ooh. No lands again. No lands. Sure. <laughs> so. I guess they have a Grey Merchant fast for the hour right now. If they have one, it's just a lot of damage. I think that not attacking, not attacking with Sitting Raz means they just want to Grey Merchant fast for the hour. Four mana, three mana, two mana. No, they don't want to do anything. They're taking their time thinking, probably. Oh, let. Oh no. <laughs> I think I'll block their sitting out. Don't really wanna take too much damage. After all, hoping they don't have an art. Not gonna draw uh, this card that could get a bronze scale. Oof. We draw to our current existence, uh, which is not really great. But at last, I think that's better than nothing. Okay, so I'm killing at last one creature just to use the mana instead of casting cash down or casting truth to existence. This card, uh, Mars Grasp, is clearly worse than the other way right now, but because my opponent creature does a pretty poor body, there's Turn of the Black Rose. I probably will have lose right now. <laughs> I guess we can try to land a garden to the guild pile, trying to steal the monarch. But not being able to draw a land means that we aren't really lucky, I guess. Okay, discarding monarch in the last here. Play another gate, pass. Then next turn we can bring back her. Uh, and it's bring over to you, I guess. Hoping they don't have a trainer edict. If they don't have a trainer edict, we can land on card of the guild pact and just hope they don't do an hero level. Not sure if we should, uh, if we should bring back the Golgari brown scale with trainer existence, just because if I waste my mana when I. Not sure if I have the fifth mana for the next turn, means that I will be not able to double land my double guard of the guild plan. And I think that trying to steal their game with double guard of the guild pack will be better than nothing. Yikes, I guess we should play double cast now next turn. Alright. A really useless catcher commando here. Uh, still, again, no lands. Okay, so I'm gonna concede to not uh, reveal my Garden of the Guild Pack to my opponent. Uh, even Garden of the Guild Pack probably doesn't really matter against them. No, because uh, uh, revealing my Garden of the Guild Pack probably doesn't really matter because they just play the, their edicts, whatever I, I run, the creatures. Mm. 
Then game two, what I should bring against them. Because Journey to Nowhere is basically the same thing as uh, Mar Grasp, but they can return the creatures from the graveyard with uh, whatever stuff they play as a recruitment spell. Uh, Journey to Nowhere, they can discard it with Duras, but at least they think that it is very relevant as well compared to Mar's Grasp. So let me take some time to think what we could bring in. Because I think that we can keep Bokmonk, Idolist, and our monster, or maybe just cut one of those two. Um, of course, we keep always Torturate Exist and Night Whisper. We probably should also keep Catra Commando, since we can bot kill Ubliat eventually. He'll spell over Relic of Progenitus. Mm. Maybe we should cut one copy of Profines in four months, uh, just because I'm not expecting me to uh, to be in need to just cycle one card, but we can use it in a late game to Madness, uh, Rip Scrubber, or just discard a land. And if I bring in something, what I should bring in? Do you ask? I think that doesn't really do match, so I'm bringing in one copy of Journey to Nowhere, and I think that we can sure we can be play safe enough by cutting one uh, copy of our monster just to bring in another copy of Journey to Nowhere. The thing is, they have creatures with a lower compared uh, mana cost compared to me, probably because my creatures cost two mana or three mana or four mana, but. Uh, Usually when I play my creatures, I require specific condition to get some value from them. So I play, I don't really play on the tour compared to Middle Black. And they probably also have more creatures compared to me. So I think that adding more Rebel spells, especially since they may want to win by with the Monarch or with Remission of Spells, so that is probably better. Okay, so we're keeping it and, and we are landing to our two assistance on game one to one just to play around uh, to play around the rest. Also, we don't really have a turn to play here besides the class, but they don't have a turn one uh, compared to compared to the spellbomb, relic or Duras. So there's no need to cast my grasp on turn two. I think this end is kind of weak if we don't draw another land, but I truly hope that by having 21 lands we'll be, be able to draw the third land in uh, a decent uh, time. So there's no just a turn one, <laughs> but we draw another two to that existence. So we are naming white here. And I truly hope that we will draw another land. So we'll be able to cast in Spring Overseer and then eventually cast Curse Cover. What this is this shit? Secret Squire seems truly bad. Wow. So we are killing the air creature. Just because we have enough lands in end. Then we are casting black we are playing Black Dragon Gate. I can and still naming white. Keep in mind that uh, having uh, the Baldur's Gate instead of the uh, Arabica Gates could be better because we can eventually can name green if we are in need to cast uh, uh, if we are in need to cast uh, the badness the lizard light lizard or lizard. Alright. This game we are having a good start compared to the previous game. And then right now they can't really uh, they can't really play their monarch. And we also have the Google Carry Brown scale. Okay, we are attacking first. If they didn't play anything during their turn, maybe they have an instant speed removal spell. Whatever, we are casting Night Whisper here. 
and we also have another inspiring power suit. So unless they have suffocating fumes, I'll play an inspiring power suit. So it's less likely that they have a monarch for the next turn. Whatever, they need two armor spells or suffocating fumes. Alright, there's cast down, double cast down. Throw Lin. No! Double cast down into Night with into Biju Kabog at the right time. And. Uh, should we name Green with Citadel Gate? I think not. So, we're casting this land, naming black because we prefer to have all our lands that can activate for tutorial existence hoping they don't have the monarch and they don't have the monarch but we have curb rods should we cost curb rods just to force that one of the rumble spell because we have gold guard brown skull nah i think there's no reason to force that play oh well they clearly have all the remote spells in end, so even if I play Kribarat, I think that there's no reason to... Okay, sure, so we can play Kribarat and destroy their, their creatures. Well... Why they kept Sticker Squire on the top is truly bad as a creature. Alright, so we are tapping the white mana, fresh barrels, cycle, and pick a swamp, play the swamp, and play Creepers. So let's see if they have a Rumble spell. If they have a Rumble spell, well, we are, gonna, we are still killing the creature. Play a land, they attack for three, for three, three or three. Did he have a Kibikan Shinobi? Wow! <laughs> Alright, should I cast cast down here? Nah, I think not. I'm tapping two, kill the Rokiba. Then I can do some cool tricks with my Gold Girl Brown Scale. And then eventually next turn we can get extra advantage with Grim Scrubble. If I remember correctly, I also have another Seeker Square so we can kill all their creatures with, uh, with Grip Rats. Oh, they found a Pestilence. I think we should get back to lives by discarding Kribrots. And I don't wanna dredge my Golgari Brown Scale, so play land. Bring back the Kribrots. Discard Golgari Brown Scale, tap, planes, swamp, play the rats, and pass. Now they have a pestilence. So if they want to do something, whatever, I'll rot for 3 damage now. Deal some damage, kill some usual creature. Then next turn we can bring back both my creatures. They can't play Pestilence right now, so they have at least one useless card in hand. And now, starting from the next turn, we can get eventually back advantage with Square Scrubber. But we prefer to have a one well, Gary Brown skill in the graveyard since we can get back some lives. And getting back lives means that uh, we are not hurting ourselves too much with Square So I bring back first the Brown skill just to. Hmm, just to get. 
back the advantage from and just to get some life then we are discarding the bronze skill bring him back I think uh, go Gary bronze skill I think uh, Gary scrubber so I need to generate advantage in this creature we are not raging we draw a cast down I think we should just pass here and let's see what the opponent want to do we can eventually cast Girl Scrabbler in their end phase and do we really want to do that? I think yes so we are tapping one black discarding Girl Scrabbler casting Girl Scrabbler and bringing back both Creep Rots and Girl Scrabbler the cool part about Gorus Crabler is that we can also return one creature from another player graveyard in their hand. Not in our hand, but in our opponent. Now we have a Gorus Crabler on the battlefield, and we can just wait for the opponent to kill it, and then we replace it with Brown Scale with another card. I think that's the cool part about madness is that we can just do a lot of cool stuff okay so i think that now we can kill them with cobras so we're delaying three damage then we have one two three six seven eight we have the right amount of life just to kill them of the right amount of black mana just to kill them. Black is 7, Kerperos for 7. GG. This one is a weird game because we really didn't draw any. Okay. Sure, I wasn't expecting Tendrils of Agony in a deck with Jimmy Aqueduct. But. Uh, I guess I should play around Tendrils of Agony starting from the next game. Unless they are dealing me 12 damage in only one single turn. And they have 7, 8, 9 black mana. Monarch or Merchant? That's a Merchant, I guess. Double the Merchant of Asphodil will me mean event that uh, eventually die. Corrupt? <laughs> Did you really play Corrupt in Mono Black? <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting Corrupt in Mono Black Devotion in 2002. Oh, cool! We have double. We have double. Uh, double Gregorian Brow Skill. I'm, I'm not discarding a Gregorian Brow Skill. So you turn opponent. And now for each black mana we tap, we can get back to your lives. If they play a pestilence here, we can get back a lot of life. Not gonna cast the Eager Scrubbler. Just getting some lives, just to not die. Okay, just another one, just to be sure. So we can eventually cast Grave Scrabbler if necessary. Next turn, I'll eventually kill my Pines for what? Okay, we can kill the Merchant. They're getting back only two, uh, two lives back, which is fine. They can activate Pestilence for two, and we are taking two lives back with Gorgari Browns. Not dredging, and we are taking for three, 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 
or whatever can call it top cycle for what for another block place one for cast my grass targeting my own creature so we kill their pestilence and force them to lose their pestilence yeah you can deal three damage sure do whatever you want that pestilence is not dealing too much damage when i have double good good brown scope okay get back some stuff discard scrubbler cast scrubbler get back scrubbler discard scrubbler and get back creepers I think I should return all the corporate. Then uh, I'm not tapping, wasting any any more mana. I don't really wanna lose to to the clock. And I think I also don't wanna play my corporate uh, unless I'm forced to do that. Well. Actually thinking I should be bringing it back also my god Greg Brown's code so because I have a Rafine's informant in end. I wasted our source here. But the time is also important on magical line and tortured existence. Well of course requires some clicks. Opponent now is not doing anything, it's just waiting. Maybe they're thinking about killing my own creature or they went <laughs> to the toilet. And we're attacking for four. Alright. We also play our offense informant. So we draw one card. Ah, uh, maybe I should discard my Tortured Existence. Yeah, why not? Should I also cast Night Whisper? Pass. We have a proper race now. All right, you played your one-one creature. Have ten mana. I'll play Marsh Grasp on their creatures since we are lethal if they don't have a removal spell. And we are attacking with all my creature. That's seven damage to you. You have another tendrils of agony. To apply. Okay, that's fine. Sure. We can kill them with creep wrath now. They don't have any cards left in end, and there's no reason to waste another turn and all other time just to play around. Okay. Game went really well. They didn't do anything relevant and if we had a medium game not uh, much troublesome. And uh, now I'm thinking about uh, bringing in another copy of Catra's Commando just because they have Pestilence. Mm. Probably we should put out one copy of My Grasp. My Grasp seems cool at all. But uh, is weaker compared to Journey to Nowhere, and, uh, and that's not so much about the talking about uh, my grasp. It's just weaker compared to Journey to Nowhere. Okay, they're starting first, but we have a cool hand. We have a lot of lands, but we have double interaction and a copy of Guardian of the Guild. They don't have one Duras. 
we name it or naming black with this land another seeker square they are putting first ranger on the graveyard so I guess that they don't have the third land no they have okay or cycling for I guess double black I have another white mana source in end so I think there's no need to cast anything else so we are killing their creature with flesh big marauder just to prevent them dealing too much damage if the hair turn of the black rose on turn 4 would be really painful but they don't have it and I'm just lamming my garden of the guild pot. Let's see if they have a Chenor Edict. They never played the Chenor Edict until now. And of course they have it. Uh, okay. Probably I should name Green with this Black Dragon Gate. But right now we are flooding. And by playing at Bounce Land this turn we'll be able to have more probably more. Okay. Probably more choices next turn. So they found a Citrin Grass. Terrible for us. Alright, we found an inspiring overseer. Which is great. And another land. Yeah, we are naming green. I think that our casting Gulgari Brownscale is just bad, but probably is better than nothing. I mean, if we need to have another creature on the battlefield, it's, just, it's better to cast it. So they'll play a stone rat now, and we are gonna kill all their creatures next door. Sure. Rat, your tour. And we kill all the creatures. Let's see if they have something relevant. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> oh well, at least we have found the true existence at the right time. So we can discard we can discard the Golden Browns kill. And I guess we should play Garden of the Guild Pact. So we will be able to... Hmm. How much mana do we have? We can... Uh, use... Atle we can get back at least one... Uh, uh, two lives with Gregory Brown's kill. Alright, maybe I should have killed their turn of Black Rose. But if they have only 4 or 5 mana, they can kill both kill my creature and play Okibagan Shinobi on turn of Black Rose. So if they have another Chain or Sidict, they will be troublesome because we will be not able to steal the Monarch. But if they don't have, we'll be able to steal the Monarch, and then... No, they took the active relic opportunities. But they excited their Chenar Siddict, which is great, maybe. They had relic opportunities at the right time. <laughs> okay, let's see if the opponent is able to find an instant speed edict. If they don't... We are going to slay their monarch, and then we have the cast down. And we just need to draw a creature or something that generates current advantage over useless card like to the system. Okay, just attack them. And then we have a cast down. Yeah, we are the monarch! We are the monarch, so we are getting free card draw. 
Do we need to play the planes? I think not, because we have Rafa's informant in the deck. And we draw another Guardian of the Kill Pact! Uh, Woohoo! Ah, uh, opponent, not gonna happen. Let's see, you have another Torn of Electrons, or another creature. Well, have another Guardian of the Kill Pact in hand. Also, they may have cards like Ogre of Schools, Arrangement, so probably it's better to not play all my cards. Till now, please. Desolation Zealot seems kind of fine. Hoping they don't found... Hoping they don't found the Pestilence. They have another card. Pretty annoying. Catcher's Commando. Better than nothing, I guess. Attack. Steal the Monarch. Play Guardian of the Guild Pact. I think we should play the planes, so we will be able eventually to play Catcher's Commando, crack it, and then cast cast down if we draw cast down. Oh well, whatever. Now we have a cool guy brown skill, so we can cast Cathar's Commando, block, or get one raw spell. And then bring it back with Gold Guy Brown Skull, so it's still fine. Pretty mana. Citron Grats. Annoying. Truly annoying. So I guess they will attack with everything. everything. I'll cast Kata's Commando, they'll kill my Kata's Commando, then I'll bring it back with uh, Golgari Brown's Cut and cast it again and kill the creature. Okay. I also know that I have a Tortured Existence in my graveyard, in my top deck, so I can dredge for, with uh, Golgari Brown's Cut just to. Uh, to not lose the advantage, uh, ju just to not uh, get a, a disadvantage from the Citron Guard's ability, and that's pretty awesome. Haha, <laughs> nice. Uh, I think we should not attack here. Noise. More creatures in hand with all, all this land is great. I'm not too sure if I should attack it here because uh, we can get back a Storm of Life, uh, but they may draw Great Merchant Fastbell or something else, and that would be annoying. So, basically, the last turn we were able to kept the monarch and killed their creature only because Catcher Commander has flash. That's awesome. <laughs> also this deck is truly cool to uh, as a deck uh, that uh, to be able to play this deck uh, with enough land to create existence which is not really generating any for current advantage. But we're getting we are doing some cool tricks. I see the opponent has a pestilence, so everything is similar. Pestilence will be nothing relevant, I guess. I'm doing some cool shenanigans with my pest, me with my tortured existence and the Golgari Brian's kill now. Uh, do I want to dredge the lizard? I think nope, because uh, yeah, maybe we should dredge it since we have plenty of lands. Uh, ah no, I should not because I I'm not sure to dredge a creature. Well, whatever I can eventually 
Kalatar's commando. Well, whatever, attack with Guardian of the Guild Pact and then play another Guardian. Let's go. I'm not gonna dredge in now. <laughs> we found those also cast them. So if they attack, we can play Catcher Commando just to try to block. Uh, if they have an armor spell, we can play cast them. But I guess that will be better to play the cast down instead of the Rumbles, or instead of Kartos Commando, because I wanted to have a good, my good guy Rumbles in graveyard, and I still have enough light, and I still have enough creatures on the battlefield, and what they have, corrupt. Okay, that's a corrupt. No, we are discarding more. Idealist or Kratos Commando. Now we are discarding Kratos Commando because uh, Kratos Commando, I think that is worse compared to Monkey Idealist. Monkey Idealist can bring back uh, stuff like. Uh, ooh, stuff like uh, the Ramal one. And Pestilence doesn't do much when we have so many life. So much life. We are throwing two cards. Pretty cool. Okay, since we draw first, let's show we can choose between discarding Brown Scale or Truture Existence. If they have a Ramal spell, we can and deploy it right now. Ooh. I think that will be better to have a Golgar Ground Scale in the graveyard. Can play another creature. <laughs> Noise. Pass. We also have the Monarch. And we draw another card. Oh, nice. Our recondition. <laughs> Triple three copies of Guardian of the Guild Pact is just something really good against the Moon of Black Devotion. <laughs> okay, you can deal, you can kill my creature, but you're still gonna lose, I hope. Sure. Okay, oh, so, okay, so they. We don't have three copies of Trinor City and they kill it themselves. Yay!